pleasant day to you, sir. I am Jessa J. Makatigid, a BS Ed for Social Studies. So, for today's video, I am going to tackle about small group communication in the compliance of these course, Ed 403, Speech and Oral Communication for Teachers. So, what is a small group communication? A small group communication occurs among people. Shared and purposeful communication. Allow an individual to express their views, analyze situations, and make crucial judgment. So, a small group communication refers to the interaction and a mutual mutual goals or um, mutual ideas. Each member of the group should contribute ideas, brainstorm their ideas in order for them to arrive a, a good good ideas to to solve a specific problem so that is um a small group communication there is an interaction uh, among the people of the group then let's proceed to the characteristics of a small group there is three characteristics of a small group the first one is categorized as an internal or an informal communication number two no assigned leader Hence, each member are able to influence and can be influenced per, for performing their tasks. Yes, in a small group, there is no leader. Since each member of the group will contribute or freely express their thoughts and opinions or ideas in order for the group have a um, better idea or a better solution of a specific problem. The next characteristic is Exchange verbal and non-verbal messages in an attempt to influence one another. Yes, as what I have said a while ago that small group communication, one must um, contribute ideas. So they exchange ideas, brainstorm their ideas in order for them to come up with a good idea to reach their goals, to reach the goal of their group. Then let's move on to the nature of uh, nature of small group communication. So... We have here five nature of school group communication. Number one is members. Number two, goal. Number three, interaction. Number four, interdependence. And number five is working. So now, I am going to tackle first about members. Members. There is no set number of members for the ideal small group. A small group requires a minimum of three to 15 people. So in a small group, it is considered a small group if if there is only a minimum of 3 people and a maximum of 15 people. That is considered as small group. Then, the next one is goal. Small group communication has a, has a common goal or purpose. This is collective or group reasons that defines minds and directs the members of the group. Yes, in a small, small group communication, small group there should there should be a goal to accomplish in which um each one of the group or each member of the group will give will give ideas collect ideas in order to come up with a good idea to solve a specific problem and their goals is to solve the problem so that's their mutual goals then the next one is interaction Members communicate with each other to establish a relationship and to share information that will help them arrive at decisions and solve the problem. Yes, in a small group, there should be an interaction in which um, each members of the group should communicate with each other in order for them to reach or to come up with a good idea. As I said a while ago that um, they brainstorm ideas they collect ideas, share ideas for them to to come up with a good idea and to reach its goal, which is to, to solve a specific problem. The next one is interdependence. Members function as a team. Each one assumes responsibility for doing their part. The success or failure or failure of one is felt by the whole group. So, interdependence. When we say interdependence, each member of the group will work work as a team. Um, each member of the group will do their part. 
So just like for example, um, I have this group making of um, research paper. So each group will be given a task like I am going to make a methodology and then the rest will do the other parts of the research paper. If there is a, uh, if your group should kanang mafail siya, then the uh, the whole group will be kanang affected. So interdependence, one or each member of the group will work for their part in order to uh, in order for your group to be successful. Then the next one is working together as a team to pursue common goal. Use themselves as a part of the group or commitment working toward common purpose. So each member of the group um, will will be working well um, do their part do their part and work as a team to come up with a um, to come up with the good ideas and to become your group successful. Then now let us proceed to the types of small group communication. So there are six types of small group communication. The first one is task-oriented groups. The second one is relational-oriented groups. The third one is primary groups. The fourth one is secondary groups. The fifth one is teams. And the sixth one is virtual groups. So now, I am going to tackle the first types of small groups, which is a task-oriented groups. So these are formed to solve a problem, promote a cause, or generate ideas or information. So for example, an uh, example for this is a committee um, study group in which the interaction and decisions are evaluated on the quality of the product or input quality of the final product or input then the second one is relational oriented groups uh, these are formed to promote interpersonal connections and more focus on quality interactions that contribute to the well-being of group members problem so the decision making making is directed at a, a strengthening or repairing relationships Rather than completing this great task or um, debating specific ideas. Then the next types of small group communication is a primary groups or long lasting groups that are formed based on relationships and include significant others. So these groups um basically the, what we have encountered every day in our lives. Like a, a group of our family, relatives or um, society or individuality, social relatives, like just like for uh, just like uh, just as what I have said a while ago that groups includes um the family, family in our home, um, so, um, relatives in our society. Then, no secondary groups, which are characterized by less frequent face to face interactions less emotional and relation, relational communication and more task-related communication than primary groups. Just like, for example, um, we may join groups because of a uh, shared interest or need. Ni apila taan ng groups because na atay um, intentions or gakinahanglan less um, interaction. Yes, less interaction, less emotional and relational communication. Then, let's go to the teams. So, teams are task-oriented groups in which members are especially loyal and dedicated to the task and other group members on themes. So, um, the themes, um, each member of the team would, could, um, and, um, should be loyal to their group in order to um, come in order for the for their group to be successful then the last types of small group communication is a virtual groups take advantage of new technologies and meet exclusively or primarily online to achieve their purpose or goal 
So, uh, virtual groups or themes are common in academic, like um, conduct classes online. Um, or conduct classes meet online, workplace interface using webinar or video conferencing program. Now, let us move on to the benefits of a small group communication. First is, first benefits is more likelihoods can take place. So, if you are in a small group communication, um, there is um, more likelihoods can take place. The second one is, could anticipate more problems than unaccompanied individuals. The third one is, results usually gains more support. The fourth one is, individual's opinion may be partially influenced by self-interest. And the fifth one is opportunities to discuss matters or of various opinions in a controlled and comfortable environment. So that's the end of my report and thank you for listening.